Hello everybody, I am Joe Squared and today we are reviewing The Falcon and the Winter Soldier the whole season. Obviously I did review the first two episodes on the channel but I don't know, just it felt a bit pointless reviewing these 45 minute episodes every week. May as well just review it as one big thing at the end. Now I did actually write up a load of notes, you know talking points about the whole season but were decided to delete the whole thing. So we're just going to firm it and see what I can remember. Okay, so let's talk the premise of the show. The premise of the show is this is following the Falcon and the Winter Soldier after the events of Avengers Endgame. They're doing their own thing, you know, the soldiers, they kind of work for the government, but they kind of don't. They're kind of free agents, they do what they want. And there's a new bad group in town called the Flag Smashers. Awful name, but we'll move on from that. Anyway, they've got to fight the Flag Smashers. They are this organization, they're kind of like social justice warriors on steroids what they do is they're mad about how there was loads of free space during the blip because half the population disappeared and then everyone came back so therefore people were being like evicted from countries and these flag smashers feel that it is injustice and unfair so they're kind of doing these terrorist attacks in order to send a bigger message to the hierarchy. Now these are led by this British girl called Carly. Don't know why I mentioned that she's British. It's Tuesday, isn't it? And then you got Falcon and you got Winter Soldier and they kind of got a team up to sort this problem out. So that was cool. And then alongside that, you kind of have this whole drama with Captain America. Obviously Cap left the shield to Falcon, but in this, he doesn't really want it to start with. So he just sort of donates it to a museum. And then the government unveils this new Captain America, this guy called John Walker. He's like a war hero and he's blonde and he's got blue eyes. So he's he's perfect for the fit. So this show kind of had a couple different angles going on. You've got kind of the main terrorist issue and then you've got this symbolic issue. And with that, you get issues of racism about whether Captain America can be black. You know, will it be well received? And with that, I was a a little bit wary because I was worried that it might take away from the show in the sense that it might just be like a little sub thing that they're gonna have sort of peppered throughout that would just sort of take you out of the show but it wasn't that in the end they actually made it quite a key part of the show and I'm glad they did I'm glad it wasn't just something they mentioned every now and then because otherwise it would have felt like they were just doing it for the sake of it but they actually made it into a plot point and it made sense bringing this real world issue and applying it to a comic book hero because in a sense you can view that in the real world as you know obviously captain america is white in the comics and he's white in the movies he passes his shield onto falcon and you wonder how like real life audiences are going to say like, oh look they've made captain america black and they play that off basically as it would in real life in the show you know how will people receive him are they going to be wary about it? are they going to be you know knobs about it and that was cool to see i like that they made that a thing now moving on as i was saying first two episodes a little bit slow episode three and four brilliant really caught my attention after those episodes the show perks right up and i think that's mainly down to the fact that they brought back zemo you remember him he's the mastermind the architect of captain america civil war you know making the avengers collapse from the inside out now falcon and Bucky, they needed his help here to find out the secrets of the super serum that the Flag Smashers are using. And having him back was great. He's such a fun addition. He's funny, he's like sarcastic, but he's two steps ahead. And the chemistry between him and Bucky and Falcon, because they're all similar personalities in a sense, but also different. So that whole sort of camaraderie in their storyline was excellent. Another person they brought back as well was Sharon. I mean, she didn't do, is that an A? Sharon? Yeah, we'll go with that. She didn't bring much for me to the show, at least not for a majority of it, until the ending reveal, which kind of showed that she is this person called the Power Broker, so she's running this huge criminal empire, and then you start to get the seed of doubt about, ooh, is she a criminal? Is she actually, uh, is she actually gonna work against the so-called good? I'm interested to see where they follow that. Obviously, that's something I guess they're setting up for future movies or TV shows. Now, obviously, they brought back characters, and they brought in new ones the character of john walker who is meant to be the new captain america and obviously as an audience your instinct is to hate this man he's not captain america he's not chris evans he's some dude he got instinct just but i don't like this guy and that was exactly my reaction i don't like this guy all right there's only one cat but his arc was very very interesting he starts off as this good guy he's trying to be friendly with falcon and with the winter soldier but they're like no you're replacing our friend dude piss off and this bugs him all right he wants to be part of the team 
they ain't having it and he just sort of gets more agitated and the fact that he can't stop the flag smasher group and then he's also got the falcon and the winter soldier working against his agenda and he's got this really interesting arc where he starts off as this hopeful character and he just sort of gets madder and madder and madder and madder and then he hits breaking point when his friend mr battlestar gets uh, you know now this makes john real mad and that episode four ending of course if you've seen it crazy the rage that filled within him but you completely understand it as a viewer and you're actually rooting for him when originally from the start you weren't he's holding that shield and you know what he wants to do with it and you're rooting for him he's saying john son do it i got no problem with it you go ahead pal and he does and as a viewer you're like that was brutal but i love it fantastic his arc very cool last couple episodes they're okay i feel like they had too much to do in the last couple episodes from all that had been set up a lot to finish especially in episode six the last episode they had a lot of wrapping up to do 45 minutes you're on a tight budget here that being said i do like how they finished all these characters arcs i think they were all finished well but i think they were finished abruptly you know john walker ends up kind of coming back to the good side and he, he does get redeemed even though the government pissed at him for killing someone in public but you know they just sort of you know tuck that under the rug we'll forget about that so him and bucky and sam they're like yeah let's team up captain america and captain america and the winter soldier but yeah they deal with the flag smashers carly's arc comes to an end she was she was a good villain it's a bit of a cliche villain you know she's like a She's a teenager or she's, you know, young 20s or whatever. But she's angry, she's grrr. And she's just a bit of an anarchist who's mad at everyone and thinks the world is completely unfair and she just wants to, you know, cause chaos. And she does, but, you know, eventually her moment does come to an end. And there's a nice little moment between her and Sam as she sort of dies in his arms and she just sort of realizes that she messed up she says sorry and that was a, a nice little moment and you know you got this character as well who's introduced about halfway through called isaiah really nice arc between him and sam and you get some really touchy moments between them some really good dialogues conversations very nice you know the scene in the museum kind of gets you a little bit you're like you know what that's sweet i like that and you know sam had a really nice arc in this i'm saying the word arc a lot you know he's a character i didn't really care all that much about i wasn't maybe overly keen on his character but this brought a lot more depth to him made him a lot more likable and i enjoyed that it's nice that we got that the same with bucky there are two characters that have been sub characters throughout you know the mcu franchise but now they're getting the screen time they're getting the moments and you know bucky was sort of a surprise in this the fact that he went from this character that is you know just sort of filled with i don't even know what the word is kind of it's like he's depressed basically he's just kind of gives everyone the cold stare and he's never happy with anything and you feel like he never will be happy but in this you see these signs of him sort of fixing himself on the inside so that he can be better on the outside you know doing good being a good person actually being a hero for once because even though you know he got away from being the winter soldier and became you know bucky it felt like he was still the winter soldier but he was just working with the good guys rather than he was a good guy overall these characters they just told nice art for all of them developed their characters a lot more and set up the future very very promising promising promisingly it looks promising it's the point i'm trying to make here what i will say is this this is a very good show it is better than one division for sure overall definitely tells a better story a less messy story and it's a series i would probably re-watch if there was a season two coming out you know like a direct follow-up to this i'd be like you know what? i'm gonna recap season one one division i wouldn't do the same but i doubt there'll actually be another one division in review first two episodes a little bit boring but it's the setup it does get going three and four fantastic episodes really really good the best Marvel television I've seen by far. And then the last couple episodes, a little bit rushed, but still pretty decent. And I liked the way it finished. This show definitely could have, and I think should have been longer. I feel like WandaVision should have been the six part show, which was the length of this. And this should have been the nine part show. You know, this should have been an eight to 10 episode show. They didn't necessarily have to add more. They just needed to flesh this story out because I think everything could have been a little bit more spaced out. I think it just needed a little bit more time, but overall, a very good show if you're a marvel fan this is definitely worth watching and i'm going to give the falcon and the winter soldier series one an eight out of ten thoroughly entertaining i do hope we get more whether they'll continue these stories on 
in a movie or another TV series. I think a TV series would be better because then you can follow these specific characters, Bucky, Sam, John Walker, Sharon. <laughs> Have I just said a different name? I don't know. I think that's the name, I don't know. But yes, these four primary characters, we can follow on with them, we can get more. And yeah, I hope they make a season two of this. I'd love to see it. If you saw it, please let me know what you think about it. Do you have any theories? What you think is going to happen next? Do you think they'll do more? But either way, thank you all very much for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.